The XPS 13 vs MacBook Air series is made possible by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create your very own website, blog, or online store. It features an intuitive interface, great looking templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try it out at squarespace.com slash mstech and use the offer code mstech at checkout to get 10% off. If you're in the market for a $1,000 laptop, two of your top contenders should be the Dell XPS 13 and the MacBook Air. The purpose of this series is to put them head to head and find out which one offers a better overall laptop experience for your 1000 bucks. This is part two, which will be focusing on benchmarks and how they perform against each other. And part three will be coming soon, will be about software and overall user experience. <laughs> Benchmarks are a good way to compare two similar products. I'm going to be running a whole bunch of benchmarks from real world to synthetic and all that kind of stuff, but keep in mind some of the benchmarks or tests will not be perfect and will have outside variables, but with that out of the way, let's do this. Before I get into any of the actual benchmarks, here's a full spec comparison. Starting with the CPU, the XPS 13 has a slightly faster 5th generation dual core i5 CPU compared to the previous gen i5 in the air. The XPS 13 also comes with 8GB of RAM, while the Air has just 4GB. They both come with a 128GB SSD, but the MacBook Airs is PCIe based, while the XPS 13's is M.2. The XPS 13 has the faster Intel HD 5500 graphics compared to the Air's Intel HD 5000 graphics. The XPS 13 has a higher res 13 inch 1920x1080p display compared to the Air's 13 inch 1440x900p display. And lastly, the MacBook Air hack actually has a 54 watt hour battery compared to the XPS 13's 52 watt hour battery. My CPU benchmark of choice is NovaBench. It scores the laptop CPU, RAM, graphics, and storage, but we're going to be most interested in the CPU score. The XPS 13 CPU scored a 398, which is about 15% better than the MacBook Air's 348. The XPS also won in RAM and graphics, but the MacBook Air did win in storage, and that was all pretty much expected that the XPS 13's new 5th generation i5 would out slightly outperform the MacBook Air's previous generation i5, so as far as the CPU goes, the XPS 13 does win. For the GPU benchmark, I actually only did the Unigen Heaven benchmark because it's a nice cross-platform standard and it avoids incompatibility issues between Mac and PC when it comes to games, and you're really not buying these laptops to play games anyway. They'll be able to play simple games, they've got good hardware in them, but if you get to like high settings, AAA titles, you're going to have a tough time. The XPS 13's Intel HD 5500 graphics scored a 381 versus the MacBook Air's 354, which is about a 10% increase, which is expected because the 5500 graphics are about 10% better than the 5000 graphics, so nothing that big here, but the XPS did have a higher overall and average frame rate throughout the benchmark and performed about 10% better. Boot times on laptops are actually pretty important, and both the MacBook Air and XPS 13 have fast SSD storage, so I thought it'd be interesting to see which one boots faster. So let's find out. Yeah, so as you can see, the XPS 13 did boot slightly faster than the MacBook Air, but it was really close, and it's not like if you had the Air you would be disappointed with a slow boot time, but the XPS 13 was slightly faster booting up. Speaking of SSDs, for the storage benchmark, on the XPS 13 I used Crystal Disk Mark, and on the MacBook Air I used the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test, but do keep in mind that there is a difference between the two SSDs. The XPS 13 is an M.2 SSD, and the MacBook Air is a PCIe-based SSD. The XPS 13's read writes were 452 megabytes per second read and 121 megabytes per second write, and the Air had 710 megabytes per second read and 315 megabytes per second write. So it turns out the MacBook Air's SSD is significantly faster, but they're both blazing fast, and in most real-world applications you wouldn't be able to notice a difference, but there are scenarios out there where the MacBook Air's faster storage will be noticeable. Say you're recording a game onto your storage drive, or like you're loading a huge map, the Air will be a lot faster. So this is an interesting comparison between these two laptops. Wi-Fi speeds are incredibly important with portable laptops because that's how you connect to the internet, and I actually thought there would be a difference 
but there wasn't. The XPS 13 was 17.6 megabytes per second down and 6.2 megabytes per second up, while the Air was 18.1 megabytes per second down and 6.3 megabytes per second up. So yeah, the MacBook Air technically has slightly faster Wi-Fi, but there are also other factors that I couldn't take into account, so basically, they're the same. Alright, to test how long the battery lasts, I went with a very real-world test. This is not synthetic, this is not extremely controlled. What I did was take my OnePlus One review, which actually just hit a million views, that's awesome. Um, I took my OnePlus One review, which is a 13-minute video, I played it back full screen, full resolution, full brightness, and full sound, and I just recorded the percentage hit each laptop took from the start of the video to the end of the video. So the XPS 13 went down 5%, and the MacBook Air also went down 5%, and they were both near full charge, and obviously this isn't an indication on how long it will actually last the entire battery, but it does say that they handle video playback similarly, and they have similar sized batteries, so it doesn't say too much, but I ran the test anyway to see if there would be a difference. So charging speed isn't important to everybody because a lot of people will just be charging overnight, so it doesn't matter how quickly it gets to 100%. But for a lot of people, that quick charge, if you only have a couple minutes to spare, is important. So I timed how long it would take to charge from 0 to 25%, and also how long it would take to charge from 0 to 100%. The XPS 13 took 21 minutes to go from 0 to 25%, and the MacBook Air took 23 minutes to go from 0 to 25%. And that 2% difference really isn't anything, and I couldn't test battery degradation, so over time, it's possible that the battery or these results would change, but basically, they're the same. And because I'm so good at running benchmarks and tests, I actually turned the timer off after going from 25%. So I don't have a time going from 0 to 100%, but the MacBook Air did reach 100% before the XPS 13 did. Concluding this is pretty easy. The XPS 13 had a faster CPU and faster graphics, and while the MacBook Air had a much faster SSD, the XPS 13 actually booted faster. And then they both had similar Wi-Fi and battery benchmarks. And all of this was pretty much expected from the spec sheet, but looking at specs and looking at benchmark results are totally different things. So either way, I ran the benchmarks and these are the expected results. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for part three where I talk about software. That's interesting. And overall user experience. And that will kind of be the concluding episode. So you'll see which one I like better. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, stay classy. Before I leave, I do want to talk about Squarespace again. Now before Squarespace, my only website building experience was an old free website that I made in elementary school and it looked awful. And when I tried out Squarespace for the first time, it blew my mind how much easier it is. The tools and templates they provide let absolutely anybody create a beautiful and incredibly functional website. It's only 8 bucks a month to get your own website and that comes with a responsive design that scales to look great on any device, a free included online store, and 24-7 customer support through live chat. You can also start building your own site now with a 14-day trial with no credit card required. But when you do make a purchase, use the offer code MSTECH at checkout to get 10% off. And I just want to thank Squarespace for supporting the channel and making this awesome series possible. So thank you. Squarespace. Build it beautiful.